Welcome to an exciting new episode of talking, sorry, about Stoicism. <laughs> I'm sorry I wasn't there last week to give you Stoic guidance, but I am, uh, I'm, I'm teaching two courses, two sections of one course and then another course this term. Two sections of an advanced uh, research methods course and then one section of an advanced stats course. And both are a lot of fun, but... They take quite a bit of energy. So last week, I didn't have it within me, as the kids say, to do one. I'm sorry. But I'm back! Let's do it now. I want to continue with letter 87. I already talked about that in the previous video. And I said I might want to come back to this one. And I, I, I do. I think there are two more videos to be made out of this one. I'll start off with this. You are crazy, you are wrong, you gawk at superfluities. You don't judge anyone by what is truly his. When it's a matter of income, you size a man up carefully before you entrust him with a loan or even with a benefit, for you regard benefits too as expenditures. Here's a set of quotes. His property is extensive, but so too are his debts. He has a lovely house, but he borrowed money to purchase it. No one turns, as if you could buy a house and cash these days. Anyway, no one turns out a more splendid retinue, but he does not pay his bills. If he satisfies his creditors, he will have nothing left. You should do the same for the rest. Figure out how much each person has that is truly his own. Do you think a fellow rich just because he eats from golden plates and cups even away from home? Because he owns a plantation in every province? Because his account book fills a fat scroll? Because his estates just outside the city are so large that they would attract envy, even if they were in thinly populated Apulia? He is a poor man all the same. Why? Because he is in debt. How much does he owe, you ask? Everything! Or do you perhaps think that owing one's goods to fortune is somehow different from owing a human creditor? Does it matter that one's mules are well fed and all the same colour? Does it matter about the ornate carriage? Swift steeds caparisoned with rich brocades. The martingales are hung with gold. The bits between their teeth are all of yellow gold. Such things improve neither the master nor the mule. Cato the centre, whose life was as beneficial to the state as Scipio's, for one wage war against our enemies, the other against our vices, used to ride a pack horse, one laden with saddlebags, in fact, so as to carry various useful articles along with him. I only wish there could be a meeting on the road between him and one of our well-heeled young squires, preceded by his runners, his Numidian slaves, and a great cloud of dust. Such a one would appear to be more elegant and better attended traveller than Marcus Cato, no doubt. Yet in the midst of that fashionable get-up, he is seriously considering whether to hire himself out as a gladiator or a wild beast fighter. What credit is to those times that a triumphant general, a centre above all, a Cato, was satisfied with a single nag. And he didn't even have it all to himself, for part of it was taken up by bundles hanging down on either side. Even so, would you not choose that one horse chafed by Cato's own legs over all those fat palfreys, those pacers and trotters? Uh, appropriately, he says, I see there will be no end to this topic unless I just make an end. Well, let's end it there. What I was thinking about when I was reading that part of the letter was riches and, and fortune and how we look at that. Because we tend to look at someone's wealth in very specific ways. And a while ago, I remember reading online, and this was just a, a, a random statement from someone, and not this was not a, a, a published great philosopher or something. It was just someone online who said, "Picture what it would have been like." Sorry, picture what it would have been like. If humans never develop money, I thought that was an incredibly profound statement. Think about what our world would look like had we developed to where we are today, but without money. We, we might still have jobs and we might still have hospitals and we might, we might have that technology. Well, that's something you could, you could debate, but as a thought experiment. Imagine we would have access to everything we have access to, but no money. 
how different the world would be. Maybe it would not be able to develop to the point where it developed now because there is capitalism and that drives certain changes, etc. But, but, but just, just saying, isn't it fascinating, an interesting thing to think about what the world would then look like? And it, it made me think of what do we consider wealth and what do we consider to be riches? And, and often it is the kind of things that, that uh, Seneca describes, of course, updated for our current time but i mean he talks about having a big house or having a, a very fancy horse or in this case actually someone who does not have a fancy horse so in, in our day and age we would say a car think of people who have very flashy luxurious cars and then think of people i think i want to say it's moby who's the artist who just lives in a, a townhouse and has just a normal car and it's very famous uh, successful artist i thought it was moby but he 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 chooses to live a, a pretty normal life, not live in an $8 million mansion and none, none of that stuff. And that then made me think of what, what does wealth mean to me? And I, I, I don't want to sound something that, that, that sounds horribly cliched, but I, I, for me, it is a lot more than money. We, we have to be realistic here. We have developed money. And money is important to us. If nothing else, we need it to buy food. We need it to afford the rent or the mortgage or the car payments or whatever it is you need. And, and I know there are some ways around that. But I mean, let's be frank. Most of us are not going to live off the grid, pick berries in the wood and, and live off of that. It's, it's not a lifestyle that many, us, many of us would, would have or would want to have. Although sometimes I think it would be awfully nice. But in any case... You know what I'm trying to say, I think. So if we, if we assume that money, whether we want to or not, we, we have it in our society, we need it, we need it to survive and thrive, and it's, it's the way it is, then what is wealth? And to me, wealth is found in, in different things. Yes, the money, yes, it's there, and it's, it's, it, it is important whether you, whether you want to or not. You, you, you need to make a living. But for me, it's, it's many other things. As I was reading this letter just now, thinking about what I would want to say about it, um, I, was, I was drinking some tea. I'm very fortunate in, in the uh, one province over, having a sip now, actually. One province over is a very nice tea shop that sends, that it just mails tea all over Canada and the world, by the way, called Murchies. And I really like their teas. They have outstanding loose leaf teas. Some really, really nice blends. And to me, drinking a cup of tea, good tea, proper tea, tea that I really like, makes me feel rich. Because it gives me a type of peace. And at the same time, I was listening to music. My, my taste in music is very peculiar. And if you've followed this channel for a while, I've, I've, I've alluded to this a couple times. But I... I really love Orthodox Church music. I have no religious feelings with it whatsoever, but especially Byzantine music, Byzantine, so so Greek Orthodox music, I love it. And I just found a, a monastery in France on in, of Cantoc, uh, uh, and they they put two like full CD length recordings on the website. You can download it for free. I downloaded them. I was listening to it. I love it. Beautiful, beautiful music. So listening to that and then having my tea made me feel very rich and something else that 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 makes me feel very rich that i've i've mentioned before in, in videos too but that is being outside there is i'm very fortunate where i live it's it's a it's a city not the world's biggest city it's a city but there's a lot of green and nature in it i think this is one of the advantages of being in canada but we we have here in this city a, a very nice wildlife sanctuary and I love going there. I love going there for walks. It was something that kept me sane in the pandemic because we, we couldn't really go anywhere else. But I could go there because there weren't many people and you could, you could walk apart. And I've seen all kinds of wildlife there. Rabbits and foxes and deer and moose and all kinds of birds, like even snakes and, and, and interesting reptiles. It's very fascinating to me. But in that place, I feel very wealthy. And the reason I do is that you see all the wildlife important stoic concept is that of sympathia and that is indeed where the english word sympathy came from sympathia 
And it means everything it means in English, sympathy, trying to be sympathetic, that kind of stuff. But to the Stoics, it meant a lot more. Sympathia also meant an interconnectedness. Understanding you're a part of a huge organic whole and feeling connected to the cosmos. And when I, when I walk in that, that place that I described, I love it. I love going there. I haven't done it in a while. I should do it again. But going there in twilight and there's little lakes and all the deer by the 10 or 15 or 20 at a time come out to drink water from the lakes. And if you're quiet, if you move slowly, you can see them come out in twilight you can see it's it's they can be a couple meters away from you or yards um it's amazing but again it's sympathia it's hard to not feel wealthy in my mind when you feel like you're part of something much bigger a huge cosmos all living beings connected all matter connected your matter a lot of it came out of stars you are part of that cosmos you're part of a bigger whole and how can you not feel wealthy when you realize that and that to me is a very important part of wealth and something that resonates a lot more with me than the flashy status of you need to have a big car and this kind of house and a swimming pool and all that. I don't, I don't really care that much. Um, because then, as the Stoics would say, th 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 then there is always something else, right? Like, like if, if you buy that car, then there is always the bigger car and then you want that and then your happiness becomes contingent upon that. And that way you will never feel wealthy. You'll never feel happy because there's always something else to pursue and that actually gives you more stress. Anyway, these were the musings for the week, which was a nice change of, change of pace from what were we working on? fMRI in advanced data analysis and analysis of variance in advanced stats, building up to multivariate analysis of variance. Woo! Anyway. Nice change of pace for me. And that too makes me feel wealthy. You make me feel wealthy. Because you watch what I do and seem to be interested in it. How can you not feel wealthy when you have so many people watching your work, right? Maybe you could uh, do me a favor and, and, and let me know in the comments what makes you feel wealthy. And it's okay if it's a big car or a house. It doesn't matter. But I'm just curious. I was curious how other people feel. Hope this was useful. I'll uh, I'll be back next week. I know I will be because I'm recording a second video after this. <laughs> Try to not skip another week. Sorry about that, but you know it happens. Uh, anyway, let me know about that. I hope this was useful. Glad to see you later. Bye.